Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I will be going over hypertension, which will include JNC8 guidelines with an NCLEX review on how to manage your patient with hypertension. My name is Christina, nurse practitioner. Let's get started. So at some point in your career, one of your patients or family will ask you, what is a blood pressure? In summary, your blood pressure tells me how hard your heart is working to pump blood. The higher the number, the more your heart is working to pump blood to vital organs within your body. Now, a blood pressure is your heart rate times your stroke volume. That gives you a blood pressure reading that equates to systolic over diastolic. So the systolic is the squeeze of the heart. That is what gives you most of your blood to your vital organs that need to be perfused. Use. That is why it's always the highest number on the top. And the diastolic blood pressure is the number on the bottom, which is when your heart relaxes. So we have a blood pressure reading. Now, what do those numbers mean? So according to the JNC8 guidelines, also known as the Joint National Committee, a normal blood pressure is a systolic below 120 millimeters of mercury and a diastolic blood pressure below 80 millimeters of mercury. When elevated, a systolic blood pressure between 120 to 129 millimeters of mercury and a diastolic blood pressure less than 80. But why does an elevated blood pressure matter? Because as a healthcare provider, we need to educate our patients on prevention. Aside from elevated blood pressure readings, if we know patients that have risk factors that can contribute to hypertension, then we can identify those triggers and start educating sooner. If we can prevent our patient from developing hypertension, we can help decrease the rate of mortality. Hypertension is a major risk factor for heart attacks, strokes, and peripheral vascular disease, which is basically poor circulation that causes extreme leg pain because of reduced blood flow. So getting back to JNCA guidelines, hypertension is classified into two stages. Stage one is when your systolic blood pressure is between 130 to 139 millimeters of mercury and your diastolic blood pressure is between 80 to 89 millimeters of mercury. Stage two is when your systolic blood pressure is at least 140 millimeters of mercury or your diastolic is 90 millimeters of mercury or greater. Yes, I have that committed to memory. And to take it a step further, you also have isolated hypertension. It is either when the systolic is solely affected with a normal diastolic or vice versa. Another NCLEX tip, if your elderly patient comes in with a blood pressure reading of 120 over 110, that diastolic is pretty high. This increases the patient's risk for a cardiovascular event. And primary hypertension is a hot NCLEX tip. Those risk factors that you must know include any one of the following, obesity, smoking, high cholesterol, um, aging, family history, African-American, too much alcohol, foods high in sodium intake, and unfortunately, caffeine. So some providers may mention secondary hypertension. It means the high blood pressure was acquired from medication such as estrogen or illicit drug use, or it could possibly be an endocrine disorder such as hyperthyroidism or possibly pregnancy induced, just to mention a few. So let's think of a patient scenario for nursing management, a patient known as Mr. Smith, a 36 year old male. He is concerned about his blood pressure and his health. He hasn't had a physical as an adult and his BMI is 36. He brought in a blood pressure diary that his sister suggested he do. So he brought it in and he shows you his diary of his blood pressure readings. Now take a look at these blood pressures. As you can see, all of his blood pressure readings are elevated. My question to you is, can Mr. Smith be diagnosed with hypertension today by his healthcare provider? The answer is yes. And what type of hypertension does he have? Is it primary or secondary or isolated hypertension? 
it would be primary because of his age, his BMI is 36, which is a sign of obesity, and he has no other medical history as we know for now. So what do you do next? Consider lab studies. You want to identify if your patient has any organ damage and rule out secondary causes. So you would want to check the following, a baseline EKG to identify if there's any abnormal rhythms or ST elevation, which can be a sign for a heart attack. Also, you wanna check for a full lipid panel, make sure that they're fasting, order a UA, which is a urine analysis to see if he may have some protein in the urine. When there is protein in the urine, it may be a sign or an indicator that your kidneys are not functioning properly. Also check for your BUN, creatinine, your GFR. This will give you a baseline of your patient's kidney function. And don't forget your CBC. Sometimes in the presence of anemia, it can cause an elevated blood pressure. A hemoglobin A1C is also important, which measures your blood glucose over the span of three months, and it helps you diagnose diabetes mellitus. So the lab report comes back, and this is what you see. I put in bold what is abnormal. As far as what is abnormal, his total cholesterol is 255. Normal is less than 200. His LDL, which is his bad cholesterol, is 191, with normal being less than 130. And his triglycerides are 160, with normal being less than 150. So as a RN, you're asked to educate your patient on hypertension management. It is important to learn the point system that is very effective, which is key for NCLEX. So to begin with, the DASH diet, which emphasizes your two gram sodium diet. You want to be able to consume foods that will also help lower your blood pressure, which are rich in calcium, potassium, and magnesium. Just diet alone can drop your blood pressure by eight to 14 points. Also, weight loss can drop your blood pressure by five to 20 points. And sodium restriction, this can drop your blood pressure by two to eight points. Exercise, this can drop your blood pressure by four to nine points and emphasize that they at least have to do 30 minutes a day. Alcohol intake and moderate consumption of less than one to two drinks per day can reduce your blood pressure by two to four points. For additional guidance, you want to emphasize reducing stress and smoking avoidance with education on how to quit. The healthcare provider typically will suggest a lifestyle approach to reduce risk factors, initially for about one to three months. If not, and if it's not effective, the lifestyle changes, then the provider can discuss possibly introducing hypertensive medications. The overall goal is to reduce blood pressure to decrease the risk of mortality, and meds are typically used to help manage and decrease your blood pressure. So some of those medications include thiazide diuretics, calcium channel blockers, your ACE, which is your angiotensin converting enzymes, and your ARBs, which is the angiotensin receptor blocker. Also what is prescribed are beta blockers and combos that account for about typically 75% of patients that may need two antihypertensive meds and sometimes more. Be sure to check out my upcoming videos on cardiovascular hypertensive meds and how to manage a patient with hypertension and understand what you're giving to your patient that will be on NCLEX. Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming notifications.